Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 21st, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see BC, Washington, Oregon. Check out the spin in the atmosphere as this upper level low sits over the inner mountain west, spreading moisture back around, wraparound moisture coming back across the area. Heavy rain for Montana, Wyoming, east of the Rockies, some winter weather advisories across the higher terrain of Idaho and Montana as we speak. And this will continue over the next couple days as it kicks off to the east, and then we're going to have a couple nice days also western Oregon, Western Washington, warming up quite nicely for some areas tomorrow, but enjoy that while it lasts because the storm train is going to return here as we go on in through the early portion of next week. We'll look at those details here in a moment. Taking a look at the Western Pacific, this is the Slug of Moisture Tropical Connection here out across Japan. This is going to merge with the trough off the coast of North America and really develop a deep uh, low pressure center there, and maybe even a bomb cyclone and point an atmospheric river at the West Coast. Some breezy conditions or some windy conditions possible with that system as well. And then the potential for additional systems exist after that. We'll look at those details here starting now. Here we go with that Slug of Moisture that I just pointed out across Japan. You can see it streaming across the Pacific, merges with that trough, points the atmospheric river there pretty deep low looks like it's going to develop there right off the coast of vancouver island maybe bringing some windy conditions with it as well and then as we go off into the a little bit further into next week you can see how that next atmospheric river potentially pointed at the pacific northwest also and these details will become more clear as we get closer but pretty good agreement and a deep low that you can see right there developing right off the pacific northwest as we go through sunday into monday now, looking at SeaTac yesterday, 64 degrees, but a pretty nice day. After that rainfall fell during the morning hours, 41 hundredths of an inch. Definitely, we will take it. It has been very dry across the area, and we'll look at some of those maps here in a moment and see just how dry we've been over the last three months. But we should be warming up a bit today and tomorrow before the storm train starts rolling back into the area. And if you look at the records back in history here for SeaTac, you can see we start getting some of these more interesting precipitation makers here. As you can see, we've got numerous records of over an inch here during the 24-hour period, including 2020 there, over an inch on September 23rd. If you want to save 10% off on a nice, affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10%. And also, I'm going to be giving one of these away today. If you put in Weather Station in the comments in one of my two videos yesterday, you are automatically entered into the drawing. So that's all you had to do to become eligible. So I'll be announcing that later on today. This is for Spokane National Weather Service. Always good with its graphics. You can see the OMAC here, 25, 30 miles per hour. The Okanagan River Gap is right here, a cold air conduit that goes up into BC here. So it kind of favors north winds coming down across the area. But you can see some other gusts up towards 35 miles per hour. Patchy blowing dust across the Columbia Basin here. This peaks between about 1 p.m. up until about 1 p.m. today. Rough water area lakes, including Moses Lake there as well. Wet and raw backcountry conditions across the higher terrain. Look at this southwest Montana, northwest Montana. Highs only into the 40s. Snow levels down to 6,500 feet or so. Easterly wind to 30 miles per hour. Where did summer go? Pretty chilly out there. You're definitely feeling it across the higher country there, across some of the Rocky Mountains. Winter weather advisory across some of the higher terrain as well. And it is across the higher terrain. It's not really impacting, you know, even Butte, Helena, you know, not impacting those areas or Missoula. But you can see there is some uh, wind advisory out there as well for places like Kalispell. So, yeah. A little touch of winter here as we go through late September. Now, total swell, this is with that upper level low kind of moving out across the area today. Uh, waves relax, but you'll clearly see them start to build. Now, here we go through Sunday afternoon. Cyclone under development off the coastline there and spreading some big waves as you go on in towards Monday night and on into Tuesday morning. Look at that out there. I think I might have to work one uh, Tuesday, though, so I probably will miss that big wave action on the coastline. But, yeah, definitely a touch of fall here. As some big waves come rolling towards the coast with that strong storm system developing that we're going to look at here in a moment. This is looking at the European. This is last night's run, 06Z. You can see the upper level low here. Bit of a transient ridge there. Maybe a couple nice days warming up tomorrow. And then we really dig this trough out across the Pacific Northwest here. And this is a very cold low pressure system here as well. I mean, look at these heights well down. Um, you know, well below average for this time of year off the coastline, pointing to strong atmospheric river, and it should develop into a pretty strong low. Some of the models are showing sub 970 lows out here impacting Vancouver Island, which would bring windy conditions to the Washington, Oregon coast, maybe even inland a bit here as well. So we'll look at those details as we go through the video today. Also, GFS kind of showing that transient ridge there, and then we start to swing the systems into the area, deep trough out over the Pacific Ocean here, atmospheric rivers, and check out if we go through the GFS, this trough hangs out for a bit, redevelops here across the area, redevelops again. 
Um, and then, yeah, and then deeper the Gulf of Alaska lows continue all the way in through early October. The GFS wants to keep things quite active for us here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, looking at Seattle Tacoma International Airport, you can see on the GFS, the deterministic run kind of on the higher end of the ensembles here and the mean probably more realistic as we look at precipitation totals by the time you get in towards Monday morning, probably surpassing the one inch mark for SeaTac and then you know climbing as we get more systems here on into the later portion of September as well. But we're still got some pretty good uncertainty after this, after this initial system. Even the initial system and the deepness of the low pressure and position are still up in the air. Seattle Tacoma International Airport, you can see the GFS calling for about an inch and a half by the time we get towards Monday night on the control run. The mean is just under an inch there, probably a bit more realistic. But yeah, pretty wet system here rolling in would be good for our vegetation across the area. Bellingham. You can see, again, the ensemble control, the deterministic run basically, is on the higher end and exceeding even the most extreme ensemble runs there. So you got to kind of not just look at the deterministic run. This is why forecasters use ensemble runs. As you can see, that mean is definitely more, you know, it's it's a little bit of a calming influence here on the, some of the extreme deterministic runs been showing on the GFS. Doesn't mean it can't happen, though. GFS for Astoria, and again, a kind of on the higher end of the ensemble runs there with the control, but definitely a wetter period starting to emerge here towards the later portion of September. Brookings, Oregon, looking at potentially two inches there in a 24-hour period as we go on in through the day Monday. Nice atmospheric river rolling across the area there. Hopefully it can help out a lot of the forest fires there across southwest Oregon. This is up on Vancouver Island. Kind of still some uncertainty in just how much precipitation is going to be falling here. And you can see still some good disagreement between the control and the mean as these systems roll through in one way out there into early October. Now looking at sea level pressure. So this is last night's European run versus yesterday afternoon's European run on the right. So we're going to watch the development of the slow pressure system. We get a weak frontal system rolling through here on the day Saturday, but then the big one is out here. And you can see this very deep low. Last night it had a 959 millibars, but a little further east with this one, this uh, last night, 966. And you know you don't need a you don't need a 960 millibar low to cause some pretty interesting and windy conditions. And this one was a little bit further to the west with a 976 millibar low. So that would have some pretty good impacts along the coastline. You'd be gusting up over 50 miles per hour and some pretty strong winds across Vancouver Island and maybe Western BC as well. It could spread inland a little bit here, again, depending on the exact location of this storm. But yeah, pretty powerful cyclone there rolling through. And then another one on its heels with the Europeans still agreeing. That, I mean, we're, we're going to be looking at this as we go. We're, we're looking a ways out. This would be for Tuesday night right now. So that's the system right after it. And this is max 10 meter wind gusts. So there goes that initial system here as we go through the day Saturday. Just some breezy conditions made for the coast, but then you'll clearly see this monster out here over the ocean, over the open ocean. But it could be bringing some higher winds to the coastline, Vancouver Island, even in towards some of the Willamette Valley. I mean, the European is showing up over 40, 45 miles per hour, not really impacting Seattle too much on this control run version uh, of the European at 6Z. But it's pretty close and it doesn't take much wind this time of year, especially if the trees, like I suspect, may be kind of drought stricken and weakened. We could be looking at some significant tree damage once you start getting gusts over 35, 40 miles per hour inland. And you can see some pretty strong winds in the Strait of Georgia, Vancouver Island, some of the higher terrain, the Olympic Mountains, and of course the coastal areas as well. Now looking at Tillamook, you can see some breezy conditions rolling in here as we go through Monday afternoon, some gusts, you know, around 40 miles per hour, nothing too crazy. Quileute, Better chance the further you go north, of course, towards that low pressure center, you can see some of these wind gusts getting up over 50. The control run says 54. This would be for Monday night. And this is Hoquiam. Some gusty conditions as well. Could get be getting up over 40 miles per hour. Seattle Tacoma, you can kind of see some of these ensemble runs do show 40 mile per hour gusts. The control run showed 34 here. So that could create some you know nuisance power outages. We'll just call it right now. But I mean we had a 27 mile per hour gust and I saw some tree damage here in Normandy Park. So I don't think some of these trees are doing too well. So anything over 30 miles per hour can get quite interesting at this time of year. Uh, Tofino, Long Beach, this is up on Vancouver Island as well. And as that low pressure center rolls in here, we do have the potential for some stronger winds. 
especially the further northwest you go from the Washington coast. Now, looking at the, uh, this is the European Ensemble mean. This is yesterday afternoon. John goes out over 10 days, I think about 15 days. You can see that upper level low bringing some pretty heavy precipitation across some of Montana, Wyoming, and extreme eastern Idaho. And then the storm train gets pointed at the Pacific Northwest. And again, this is an average of all 50 ensemble members, but you can see pretty good signal here along the west coast, all the way down through northern California with some impressive precipitation totals as we roll out through early October. You know, looks like about... Uh, over two inches here, but some of the higher terrain will be getting more. Two inches for Seattle, maybe two inches for Portland, bigger amounts along the coastline. And this is looking at the GFS ensemble. I mean, it's got 30 members, upper level low spinning, bringing that heavy rain across Montana. Then the storm track comes rolling in here. And you can see, again, pretty similar signal to what the European was showing here. We're now almost out to 200 hours, close to two inches for Seattle, inch and a half plus for Portland. And again, pretty uh, consistent signal with the European. Uh, we're definitely going to flip the switch here and have a big pattern change. And look like we're going to be wet here on in through early October. This is the GFS. This is just a deterministic run as of last night. Upper level low spinning. And like I mentioned, the deterministic runs have been coming in heavier with this precipitation amounts. And those are the, in the initial conditions best we understand them. The ensembles are perturbed members. We change the initial conditions a bit, and then we average things out to kind of give us a better idea of what kind of uncertainty we may be dealing with. But you can see, look at Seattle. By the time you get out towards Saturday morning, September 30th, you know, two, two and a half inches plus there. Southwest Oregon kind of bullseye. Hopefully this can help out some of the forest fire activity across the area here. And you notice some variance across even kind of Western BC with just how much is going to fall with these systems. And then fantasy land, the GFS wants to keep drawing systems here at the Pacific Northwest. And we go through the 16 day time frame. It'll show Seattle with four plus inches. Some of the coastal areas of Vancouver Island, Olympic Mountains looking up towards 10 plus inches on that run. Now looking at the National Blend of Models, this is for to, um, today right here. You can see well, we're going to warm up. It's not going to be too bad out there across some of western Washington away from the cloud cover, this upper level low, and that wraparound moisture. And then look at tomorrow. You're talking about mid and upper 70s possible. So enjoy this nice day. It might be the last fairly warm day here of the year. Although I, I got to you know, take that with a grain of salt because we're bound to have another stretch of nice weather at some point as we go through probably at some point in October. I just don't know how warm we're going to get. So anyway, enjoy Friday. It should be nice and warm here across Western Washington, all the way up into Southwest BC, Willamette Valley. And then you can see the clouds start to arrive here. System goes through Saturday and then we start to cool things down. We're much more seasonable and probably not getting out of the 60s here as the storm train starts to take its aim at the Pacific Northwest. So interesting stuff coming up in our future. Six to 10 day precipitation. This was issued yesterday. This goes through September 30th. Again, the above average signal for much of the Pacific Northwest, below average temperatures all the way through the end of the month coming up here also. And look at this. This was issued today as well. Look at the drought monitor. They issued some extreme for portions of the foothills and cascades of Willamette Valley of Oregon. I've got a lot of comments on just how dry it's been out there also. And there's some extreme issued for the Oregon coast. You can see the extreme has been pushed down into across Snoqualmie Pass, Stevens Pass, a lot of King County there. We've got some severe drought across Western Washington, including Seattle now also, but maybe we can set a record for how quickly extreme drought once introduced can be erased because this atmospheric river is gonna be bringing some very beneficial rainfall across Western Oregon, Western Washington. So maybe we can really eat into that drought quickly here. Hopefully, fingers crossed for that. And looking over the last three months, this is June 23rd through September 20th. Look at just how dry we've been across western Washington and Oregon. A lot of places, you know, around 25% of their normal precipitation. And you're going to see that tropical storm in Hurricane Hillary, uh, the moisture that came up and really bought the above average signal there for a lot of California, Nevada, Oregon, and Idaho. So that's kind of why that area has been favored. But very dry across western Washington, Oregon, some places less than 25% of their normal precipitation. And this is for a three month period. This isn't like for a week or a month or anything. This is a pretty significant portion, 90 days. And this is temperature as well. We've been pretty warm here across Pacific Northwest. A lot of areas, two to four degrees, even some areas four plus intermixed in there. And I across the central Oregon Cascades, I, I think that might've been because of the smoke cover out there actually. So yeah, much of the Pacific Northwest has been above average here for the last 90 days, uh, absolutely. And anyway, yeah, we're going to continue to watch this. I'm going to call out the winner of that weather station. And if they don't claim the prize by the end of the day today, then I'll just go on to the next person. But if you left weather station in yesterday's 
um, one of yesterday's videos, then you are automatically entered. That's all you needed to do to be eligible to win this weather station. I'll have it sent directly to your home. So anyway, um, I'll have that El Nino video out here probably either tonight or tomorrow, and I'll do my normal briefing tomorrow. We'll talk about this all over again and see what the new model runs show. And hope you guys are liking these videos, and I'll talk to you guys then.